name is Rafa, so I'm the head of analytics for marketing services across Experian. And uh, Martin, who is going to be also uh, coming on stage in a minute, is, um, is our, one of our uh, lead architects for decision analytics. So um, we, uh, when we look at the, one of the challenges that, that we had with, um, within the marketing services division, uh, one of the key challenges was to be able to deliver relevant experience across channels where real time is becoming prevalent and uh, real time in itself was um, was a challenge to define within uh, within experience and, uh, and uh, in other business in other businesses that I've been part of we had similar challenges so what we used to define real time uh, we used the concept of average human reaction time of 200 milliseconds and uh, we needed to operate within digital walls whereby uh, you need to be able to process the data in motion in less than 200 milliseconds to drive an outcome through to digital channels, uh, but being transparent to the, uh, to the end user, so, uh, so the, the user experience is, um, is still relevant. And for that, complex event processing was, set, uh, was a key capability that, uh, that we've used to, so to deliver that. And we'll, we'll walk you through very quickly through um, the architecture we've put in place and also some of the platforms that we've integrated into CEP from an experience perspective, from a decision analytics perspective, to drive that real-time uh, real experience. So what we're seeing in the business is, uh, is a very significant paradigm uh, shift. So we're, uh, we're going from high volumes of data but with low requirements in terms of the latency so really, we don't need to operate uh, in, we haven't needed to operate in real time in the past. So huge volumes of data being processed offline and then do something with it, drive analytics and experience being quite successful at that. But what we're starting to see is that shift where the volume of data is lower, but the latency is also a lot smaller. So now we need to start to operate, as I said, in milliseconds as opposed to what we, we used to do in the past. And that's a, that's a shift that requires a completely different way to think about the, the challenge itself. So we've, uh, we've been doing quite a lot of work with, uh, with the guys from WSO2 and internally. And um, the, the architecture that we've put in place is essentially, and I'll go into the details of this in a moment, but it, it's essentially the ability to take very low level of uh, very low level of granularity in terms of the data from marketing channels, analyze it to be able to deliver um, to develop the intelligence and the predictive models that we want to drive the decision, and then integrate that into a real time platform to execute against marketing channels. So le bear with me for a second. There is a lot here, and I try to simplify it, but maybe it's not as simple as it could be. So. So what we've got across the top, and this is uh, the prototype that we've built that I wanted to show, but probably we're not going to be able with the connectivity problems, we're not going to be able to have the time. So if anyone wants, we can have a session later on. But uh, what we've done is if the first step is we're taking log files, so web, web server log files from digital platforms, so that's at the user level, cookies in essence, and we're using that to, de uh, to develop the batch predictive models that fit the mathematical optimization. And Martin is going to touch on that in a second. But Market Switch is a platform that some of you may be familiar with. It's, uh, it's very widely used across banking, financial services for credit decisioning. But it wasn't that widely used within marketing services. So we're bringing that into, into the marketing world. And it's essentially the ability to use predictive models developed offline to drive mathematical optimization with the optimal decision of what we want to promote to a specific user. So that at the top level, that's the way it operates. So we're driving that into, as a step two, into a CP as an in-memory table. So in essence, what you've got there is the, all the historical decisions that are, have been optimized using that platform, which is, is good, but is based on historical data. So there is a lot more to do there. So the next thing that happens is that uh, here we've developed 
Uh, and so many of you will have similar challenges. So getting hold of the data itself to begin with is one of the biggest challenges. So what we've done here is we've developed a Java application that simulates Google data. And uh, that data simulation is streaming through Thrift into, uh, into CD, which is the, the processing engine previously introduced. So those events are going through and pretending to be Google, navigating through different websites. And so what happens there is that CD is running the queries to identify the events that are relevant that we want to keep in memory for further analysis and, and driving that into, and I'll, I'll explain what this is, into PowerCurve. PowerCurve is, um, is a Java-based platform that is also uh, part of the Experian family. And what's happening here is that we take the latest events that we've uh, identified from the streaming application that are relevant and that we're storing here. So we take those events to rerun the scoring that we've mentioned before, so the predictive models real time with the latest information that is available for those users and re-optimizing that decision with market switch. So that's essentially real time integration within CP to drive a real time call re-optimize the whole process here, because at the moment what we have in memory is patch. We want to relook at it based on the latest information and drive the final optimal decision back into CD to execute against marketing platforms. But what is the challenge with that? The challenge with that is that you need to do that in less than 50 milliseconds, really, so, so that the user experience is, is seamless. And that's not, that's not always the easiest the easiest thing. So um, Martin will touch on some of the ideas that we had at the very beginning, some of the different architectures that we implemented to test. But the final outcome was really that the optimal, uh, to get the optimal performance was to embed PowerCurve, as I said, it's a Java-based platform, into CEP to, to deliver. So um, the objective was to deliver a sub, a sub 50 millisecond. And we've gone through a low performance optimization, as you would expect. So we started with four to 500 milliseconds, which was nowhere near what we needed for digital channels. And um, I think it's taken probably three to four months to get to where we are now. That is what I wanted to show you, but we're not going to be able to anyway. But this sub 50 millisecond is being brought down to between three and five milliseconds, which is now much more in line, much better than we anticipated, and much more in line with the kind of performance you need for uh, for digital channels. Um, the, and this is uh, this is now updated because we continue to do uh, that performance optimization. But when we put these slides together, we brought it down to 20 milliseconds. Um, one of the things we've done recently is to replace uh, one of the components we were using that was a .NET based um, application with a Java based and so the result of that simple change is this being uh, coming down to, as I said, between three and five, three and five milliseconds. So um, with that, I'll hand it over to, to Martin who will take you, well, sorry, We'll take you through a couple of um, a couple of slides on market switch and power curve to give you a flavor of what that does, and uh, and then I'll pick it up again at the end. Is it on? <laughs> okay, uh, well, I couldn't let Rafa sort of rule the stage for a while because uh, you might have noticed that I was here last year. Some of you, I don't know. So this is where I learned all about this, and this is what I took back to Experian and then told them all about it. And of course, initially they weren't interested at all because I work for a completely different division to uh, Rafa. And uh, as you know, big, large companies, two divisions, <laughs> you know, we generally definitely don't talk, do we? <laughs> so um, so we, were, we were sort of six months ahead, I think, of, uh, of the marketing division, in that we were looking at uh, complex event processing for different reasons in the credit risk space. And we created, we worked with WSO2 initially, uh, basically over the phone, uh, mainly because they wouldn't give me any money to get WSO2 over in the first instance. So that's the good thing about open source, isn't it? You can just download it and try it, so, uh, and also it's cheap. So, um, so we did that, and uh, we started to gain some traction with our business analysts and so forth. So, uh, and uh, 
really, the, uh, the product that we wanted to integrate with was our strategy management product, which is uh, it's sort of 10 years old, this product. It's gone through various iterations, but it's now called PowerCurve. Um, and PowerCurve is a very large and sophisticated beast, so I won't go into details uh, too much. But of course, if you look on Experience website, then you can learn all about it. But it, it was traditionally built for the credit risk space, and, and it came um, really from mainframe environments, really, because most of the banking industries uh, operates on mainframe, and they, some of them still do today. But this was all written in Java, so it was pretty revolutionary in the time. So we had Java running on the mainframe, um, and, uh, and of course, um, working with IBM to do that in the early days. So, but essentially, all it is is it's sort of visual metaphors, really, for business rules which allows credit risk analysts to be <coughs> able to visually design business rules and uh, segmentation and so forth. So, but we wanted to use this along with our market switch product uh, that Rafa mentioned, which, uh, which again, uh, it's not really got a very good GUI market switch, but it's, it's very mathematically oriented, you know, invented by Ru Russian rocket scientists, uh, stuff like that. So, and they are truly Russian, the guys who actually came up with this. <laughs> so, uh, and it's, it's sort of, uh, for those who aren't really um, in the space of optimization, it's sort of constraint-based reasoning is, a, <coughs> is sort of a, a, you know, an area of w which this sort of, uh, this, this is a solution for. But this is mathematically based. So it uses sort of iterative processes to sort of solve those unsolvable problems. Um, and, and in this case, uh, you know, in, in in a um, credit risk uh, space, it's trying to work out what sort of credit cards and offers and loan offers are the best uh, for a particular person uh, and for the company, because of course they also want to make profit uh, on those. So, but in the marketing space, uh, we're trying to target uh, propensity to buy something and the amount of money that a marketer actually wants to sell on advertising to you to try and get you to buy. So that's essentially uh, what it's doing. So. How do you get to huge Experian components um, that are generally much slower in the way that they're processing? You know, they can take, uh, they themselves can take multiple milliseconds to execute uh, what they do uh, into, into a CEP environment. Now, the, the, first, uh, the first thing is, that, of course, talking to uh, WSO2 CEP, they sort of hide the CIDI engine inside this WSO2 CEP wrapper and sort of offer you the wrapper. And so the only way you can connect to your stuff is through sort of distributed processing techniques. So the first thing is we, uh, we slapped on an enterprise service bus, the WSO2 service bus, and we added the Acti ActiveMQ uh, as a communication uh, mediator. And so we ran that, and uh, the decision agent, uh, which is the uh, business rule engine part of uh, PowerCurve, which is a plain old job or object, essentially. Um, that, uh, that started running, but then the latency was quite high. It was all working fine, but it just wouldn't really scale. Um, so then we started looking more deeply, as, as Raf had mentioned, to actually embed our decision agent component, which as I said, again, is a POJO, it's just a plain old Java object uh, with, it, with its own sort of business rules that, that, uh, that it loads. Uh, we embedded that directly inside the city engine. And, but the way that we did that was a transformation uh, pr approach, because uh, of course, City has got these extension capabilities, so we use the transformation. And so we did that, and that all started looking really good, and we started to build up thousands and thousands of events going through the thing. And uh, I noticed a certain pattern emerging from it, in that it looked like it was single threading on just the decision agent call. Everything else in City was running parallel. But when it was calling the decision agent, it was only getting one at a time. So what the hell's going off? This queuing still happening. And so talking to the guys, they scratched their heads, looked at the code, and went, oh, yeah. Mm. So uh, we switched to using a window extension. Apparently, uh, I, I was told at this, uh, this conference, actually, that they fixed the, uh, the single serialization in the transformation, apparently, in this next release. So that'll be good. I'll have to try it. But the, uh, the window extension approach, uh, again, just called the decision agent in the same way. And to me, uh, as uh, trying to extend CD, it was very much the same. It was just two different named things where you, um, you put in this extension and it hands you a map of information, which is data from, the, from a stream, um, and then just hands it to you, to your code. You interact with that data and give it results back um, through that map. 
and then it continues and then manages the, uh, the data being passed through, through the outbound streams. So very simple, very easy to integrate with. Um, and that actually, uh, that started to cut the mustard, as they say. So that, uh, that started to go really quickly because it was definitely calling the decision agent in parallel. So, that, so that was sort of our experience. I mean, I've just mentioned that in about five minutes, but it took us weeks to, to, <laughs> to get down to that conclusion. So um, I think that's it for me. So is this over to you yeah. to finish off? So, and we'll have a couple of minutes as well uh, for questions. So the last thing to, uh, if you want to say as well, Martin, the last thing um, in terms of why did we choose WSO2? So we explored all the typical suspects. So the CP world is quite well known. My background is in finance, uh, in banking. Um, CP for high frequency trading has been used for, for a number of years. And we explored uh, all those uh, commercial providers. But three key reasons really why we've, chose, uh, we've chosen WSO2. The first one is open source. And so we believe that wherever possible, we need to start embracing open source much more widely across the business. And that was, uh, that was a key driver. The second one is, um, and that's taken from their website, that's not me being, trying to be creative, but um, it's, uh, it's around the, level, the depth of knowledge of the support provided. So WSO2 is taking quite a lot of pride in terms of um, the support model. And uh, they, cl they claim rightly uh, in the website that they don't have pre-sales engineers. They have the engineers who work on the product providing the support that is required for clients. When you start to engage with them, you, can, you start to see the depth of skills and expertise that they have. And that's a, that's a big, big plus for, uh, for us. And the final one is, uh, is the depth of offerings. It's not, at the moment, we're very focused on CEP, and that's what we've built the prototype for and implemented in-house within our own data centers and infrastructure. Uh, but we're starting to look into many other aspects. So the, the next one that we're looking into is CSP, but not the only one. We've seen throughout the conference, we've seen a number of uh, different areas that certainly we, we're interested in and we're going to be exploring. So those are really the, the three key areas that we feel are were affecting the final decision. And uh, that's, that's when we were going to do the demo, uh, where probably everything was going to go wrong because we had to dial in into the, um, into the servers in, within our data centers. It was working fine and it's still working fine, but we can't get it on the projector. So if, uh, if any of you want to have a, a very quick look, just give me a shout and we can run that on the laptop itself. And so I think we've got a couple of minutes. If, uh, if there is any questions or anything that hasn't been very clear, I'm sure there is a lot there to go through in, in such a short time frame. And if not, you just can uh, grab us. We're going to be here for, uh, for a while, so you just can give us a shout. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>